On this week's episode, Dr. Mike walks us through four different ways to treat a bulging disc, including an at-home remedy. Hi, I'm Dr. Mike from the Springfield Wellness Center, and what we're we'll talking about today is disc issues. And so whether we're talking about the cervical or neck discs or the lumbar or lower back discs, Typical presentation for these can, can present in a, a variety of fashions. One being just pain, you know, pain in those areas. A lot of times we'll get into the, the area of radiating pain or numbness. We'll get weakness, whether in the hand, in the legs, or just a, a radiating numbness and tingling feeling down to the, down all the way to the toes, just into the upper part of the legs, or if we're talking about for the neck, upper part of the arm, over into the hands themselves. Um, can be caused by a couple of different things. One could be a degenerative process. So the longer that issues go on for it, the more likely we're gonna get some arthritis and generation setting in. As it progresses and gets worse, then we start to see it come out as a disc type issue, whether to the point of a disc bulge, a disc herniation, or just simply some disc irritation can present in a number of different fashions there. The other is gonna be acute injury. So think about a, a really nasty car accident. Um, football player spears another player, head into their player, can cause some disc type issues. We see that a lot in the NFL and things like that. And what we're gonna be talking about today are four different methods in which we here at the office will treat disc issues. The method we're gonna talk about for treating disc issues is gonna be the decompression or traction table. So a couple different names for it there. Spinal decompression or traction, they basically mean the exact same thing. It just depends on you know kind of who you're talking to more or less. But what we're doing with this table, whether it's for the lumbar spine or the cervical spine, is we're just stretching, gently stretching the joints of, of the spine. Like I said, whether it being the neck or the lower back, it stretches to a certain portion relaxes back down and holds at that stretch. And so we're never actually taking any of the weight away from it, but we're always gonna have a little bit of stretch on the joint. And what we're trying to do is take some of the discus material that may be injured, irritated, inflamed, and pull it back into that normal disc place, removing that pressure from those nerves so that way we can get some relief. Start people off with this on a pretty light scale in terms of the amount of stretch, but there's always different levels that we can grow and, and make it go higher and higher too. Same thing with the neck. We're hooking up around the neck and we're gently stretching the joints of the neck out to where we can once again remove pressure, take pressure off of those joints and off of those nerves to get the relief that they're looking for. Another therapy that we can use for treating disc issues is gonna be our laser, our deep tissue laser. And so a lot of people have heard of therapeutic ultrasound. Therapeutic ultrasound uses sound waves to induce healing at that cellular level. What we're doing with laser is we're actually using light waves. So with that, we're getting a lot deeper penetration, therefore a significant increase in the amount of healing that we're going for. And so we're gonna work on a lower back today, you know, talking along the realm of the lower back and, and disc issues. And so we're just gonna kinda work in through the muscle tissue here. As we're doing this, what you're gonna be feeling is just a gentle warming sensation. Never to the point of getting hot or any kind of uncomfortability, but going back and forth over the spine and always making sure to include the muscles that surround that tissue as well. And just working in a couple of different patterns to make sure we're getting the full depth of penetration as well as the optimal healing effect. With this, this is one that you will feel a slight difference after just one visit. You'll feel kind of, like I said, that nice warming sensation. But typically, in addition to a chiropractic care plan, we'll set the patient up on a care plan individually for the laser sessions as well. The, the first and foremost method that we always will imply when we're talking about uh, disc issues, whether it being for the neck or the lower back, is the chiropractic adjustment. And so, uh, my patient here has already been worked up and we already got an examination on her so I know kind of what her deal is. And so what I'm going to show you today is, is the adjustment process itself. And so speaking specifically to lumbar spine and cervical spine uh, disc issues, these are a couple different ways that we would, we would work, work the adjustment and do the adjustment to, to make that correction. So lay on your right side for me. So this is what we call a side posture adjustment. So there's a couple different ways that we can work with the lower back. And person, in, person dependent as well as injury and issue dependent, we'll, we'll employ a couple different ways of the adjustment itself. And so we're gonna do adjustment here. All right, then lay in the back. And we're also gonna work with the neck here. And so 
With disc issues, what we'll do sometimes, depending on the location of the disc issue, we can actually limit the amount of rotation and rotational force that goes into the adjustment. So as opposed to a, a full rotary adjustment is what we call it, we can actually employ just a little bit more of a lateral direction. So as opposed to doing a full rotation with it to make that correction, we can just take some of that rotation out of it. Reason being is that sometimes rotation can irritate disc issues even further. And so we want to still make sure that we're making the correction without potentially aggravating that area up any further. A method that we'll employ a lot of times, and this is a at-home self-care kind of method that we'll employ when we're talking about disc issues. This one specifically more for the lower back is going to be just a self-traction. That's kind of what we call it. And so what the only really equipment that's required is something to hang from. And so here we have a pull-up bar. A lot of gyms have pull-up bars. Um, you can use just the trim around the door frame in your home. Anything that's good and sturdy enough to support you for, you know, a 10, 5, five 10, 15 second segment is kind of what we're looking for. And so my lovely model Rainy here is going to demonstrate for us. So what we're going to do is have her hang from the pull-up bar. And so a lot of times when we hang on a pull-up bar, we want to stay really tight through our upper body and stuff. And with this, we actually want to do the opposite effect. So we're just going to let her body weight kind of pull her way down. We have her feet just lightly traipsing the ground. And as she's doing this, we're getting a lot of stretch in that lower back. So in this point, we're basically using gravity. You can go ahead and relax. Mm -hmm. With the traction table itself, we're, we're using the, the weight of the machine to pull and induce that stretch. With this, we're using gravity to help open and elongate that, that spine, open those joints up in that lower back specifically. You'll feel a really nice stretching through your shoulders as well. Um, you don't have to be able to do a pull-up or have to have a, a tremendous amount of upper body strength to do this. All we're looking for is just something that you can hang on to, hold on to, couple seconds time, your feet are on the ground, so it's removing the majority of your body weight. So that shouldn't be a concern, but we're trying to get that real nice opening traction kind of a stretch uh, through that lumbar spine. Hi, I'm Rainy. Welcome to the Fitbit of the Week. Uh, this week, I just want to go over the importance of a correct form of a lunge. So we've already talked about squats before, so um, that's why I'm going to show you how to do a lunge correctly. Um, and with here or in here with my patients, we usually start with something called a split squat first before we do any other kind of lunges to make sure that they know how to do the form correctly. So that's what I'm going to show you first um, is a split squat. So if you feel like your balance is a little off, have a chair or something next to you to kind of like hang on to. Because um, what we're going to do is we're going to split our feet. So one in front, one in back. Um, and you probably know what a lunge is already, so you have kind of an idea. But what you're going to do is take your back knee towards the ground. So you're going to be kind of in this position, and then you're just going straight back up. So for a split squat, your feet stay in the exact same place, and you're just moving down and up, down and up. But notice that my knee, or yeah, my knee is staying right above my foot like this because I'm focusing on keeping my heel on the ground. If I don't focus on keeping that heel on the ground and I go up onto my toe, my knee goes forward. And anytime your knee goes over your toe, most likely you're gonna end up with a knee injury or something um, hurting in the knee area. So you wanna make sure you're keeping that uh, front heel down on the ground when you're doing these. All right, so make sure you do your amount of reps on one side, Try it on the other side. Again, keep the heel down and take the knee, uh, your back knee straight down. So you're going straight up and down like this. If you do have a chair nearby, try not to like force yourself up on it. Use the strength in your legs, not your arms. So once you've got the form down for those, you wanna try doing like a forward lunge or a back lunge, uh, stationary. So you're gonna step forward, but still go to straight down and then step back. So forward and then back together. Notice that I, because I am going forward, I'm not letting that momentum take my knee forward too. I'm still stepping forward, but going straight down. Again, same thing with a back lunge. You're gonna step back and go down and then come back together. So I'm still just going straight up and down. I'm still keeping my front heel down for all of those. Then you can try a walking lunge. So this one is um, a little harder to focus on keeping that form correct because you are moving um, forward. So I'm gonna take that forward step 
Go straight down, take the forward step, go straight down, forward step, straight down. Again, I'm keeping that heel flat on the ground, and I'm not letting the, mo the momentum take me forward. I'm still going straight down, and then up, and then switching. Like that. So hopefully that will help, help you if maybe you've tried lunges before, and then you gave up because it was giving you knee problems. Um, try that split squat first and see if that helps and then move on from there. So that's this week's Fitbit and we'll see you next time. Hopefully you found this video useful and you can find out more information on our website or our YouTube page. To submit a question, watch a past episode, or to find out more about the Springfield Wellness Center, check us out on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel, or find us on Instagram. Or check out our show website at wellnesslab.tv.